Hello, Base family, and welcome to Everything Base. Uh, we're moving on today with Technical Development Unit 12. And as I expressed in the previous units, we're now transitioning from just a repeated pattern that doesn't have any really harmony or any theoretical concept behind it. It's just really physical exercises to work out every finger, every fret. Now we're starting to switch into a mode where you got to think about the scale you're playing and use the technique exercise applied to that scale. And the ultimate goal is to take this and move it to other scales, other uh, keys, and all that. So let's get right into it. Uh, today we're basing this one off the C major scale. And I learned a long time ago from both my studies and then teaching how much of the material presented exercises uh, from the root up to the octave. So I wanted to invert that and start on the octave C on the fifth fret and come down to the root. Um, so what's the concept behind this exercise? I figure if I teach you the concept first, maybe the actual fingering um, exercise will make sense. So we're starting with the octave and we're playing uh, the C, A, B, and go back to the C. So that's the first four notes. All right, and so if I can give you a little bit of like what my idea was here is you're playing the C, then you go to the, in on that string, to the lowest note in the C major scale, A, that you can play fretted, B, C, you return to the C. Now the next uh, four notes, you start on the C, but you go to the string below it, the D string, the lowest frettable note that you can reach without stretching, E, F, G. So the second one, you're going C, E, F, G. Then you go C, B, C, D. And then you go C, F, G, A. Now in this case, you do have to stretch down for that. So you see what the concept is. I'm starting with the octave, playing three notes. Starting with the octave, play three notes on the next string. Start with the octave, play three notes on the next string. Start with the octave, play three notes on the next string. Uh, you five string, um, six string players, you could of course uh, change it to use more of the neck. Um, start on a higher C on the, on, well, it'd be open C. Um, but you could go through and try that. Um, obviously, you know, there's a little bit of technique involved here, um, but now you're starting to engage like your conscious mind instead of just mindlessly playing fingering patterns, which has a place in your development. I'm not trying to say this doesn't, but we need to evolve that where you're thinking and you're, you train your brain to think about like what you're playing, where your finger's going. Believe me, if, if your goal is to play faster, um, it's really sometimes not your mechanics. It's being able to think of where to put your fingers, and that's why this exercise exists. So in time, it sounds like this. Now, it'd be easy enough if I moved it to D, just keep the same fingering pattern and work to move it to E. You, know, you, get, the, you get the gist. Um, so a pretty simple, direct, easy to teach, easy to learn uh, exercise. Uh, if, by the way, if you're new to the C major scale, or maybe you haven't really, you're not even really sure what a major scale is, I encourage you to go uh, to my channel and look out, uh, look for the um, video called Major Scale, the Major Scale, and you'll be able to uh, kind of learn the ins and outs of the scale, and then it makes it easier to, to now do something with it uh, more artistically. Um, all right. Well, that's an easy one. Uh, put this into your routine for a week. Practice this out. Mix it in with the others. I mean, this is uh, unit 12, so you have 11 other exercises. I find it to be good to go onto a rotation. Um, you might want to stick with 12 for a couple days, move it around, get real comfortable, and then maybe go all the way back to one. Unit one, practice that one out. Unit two, practice that one out uh, and, and do a rotation. Uh, when these get to a higher number, I'm going to teach you kind of a method to make sure you're practicing the ones that you need the most work on and not practice the ones that are easiest. That, that'll be coming in the future. Okay, now moving on to uh, the encore item. Uh, so growing up, I think this is for every musician who ever lived. Sometimes the first music you hear in your early development as a player has a big impact on you. And um, that's the case with today's uh, encore item, which is Fog Hat Live by the band Fog Hat. Now, I guarantee a lot of you probably don't know who Fog Hat is. Uh, you probably heard one or two of their songs because they've been used in movie soundtracks, even on TV commercials. Uh, but Fog Hat, my brothers, my older brothers, uh, would bring home music before I was really into like buying albums and stuff. And I would hear these records they were playing, and uh, this one had a big influence on me. 
Of course, when I grew up and moved out, I bought my own record of it so I could listen to it and um, bought a CD of it. I, I think I even downloaded it on iTunes. So I mean, I have, I've purchased it many times because there's, there's something about it. Um, not only are the players great, it's a great blues rock album, uh, but there's only, th like in the days of the LP, there's only three songs on each uh, side of the LP. So what I really was kind of intrigued by was that they lengthened out the songs. They had some free jam areas. Um, I also love how live the recording sounds. Pretty much every, like when I was hired as a studio bass player, you would hear over and over um, the music director or the producer talking about they want this sounded like a live recording live recording everyone's goal i think is to capture that live element in the studio and it's not easy i promise you it's not easy because uh, a lot of those projects i was on where that was their goal i would listen back to the playback tracks go that doesn't sound live to me this is the standard i hold so i want you to check it out listen to how just vibrant it is and and yeah sometimes chaotic uh there's no train wrecks that i can hear on the album but I love just the element of the sound and the performance. A big shout out to bassist Craig McGregor because, again, in my early development, I would hear him play on songs like uh, Fool for the City, which is a cool descending bass line that I just I loved. Uh, also really liked his tone. Um, I Just Want to Make Love to You, which is a cover, but, uh, but they make it their own. They put their own stamp on it. Everyone always goes to Slow Ride, and I agree, it's a great song. If you compare this, like I heard this live version of Slow Ride, then later driving around on the radio, I heard the studio version of Slow Ride and I didn't like it. It would seem so lifeless where this song has so much passion to it and great jams and dynamic. They play with the dynamics quite a bit. So I love that. Um, the sleeper track on this would be Honey Hush. I think um, I've always wanted to cover it. And like being a, if I was in a rock metal band, I would want to redo this song because I think it's got such a cool vibe to it. Great kind of power groove. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for something new, uh, maybe it's old, but it's new to you. So maybe go on and check out uh, Fog Hat Live. And I really don't want you to try out the studio albums because like I said before, I didn't like some of the studio versions of these songs because I loved the energy behind these this live recording. Uh, and one time, and you know, I don't know, if we maybe you can find it on YouTube, but one time surfing the web or surfing channel surfing one day, I came across a live concert. I think it was on HD net of fog hat and uh, there it was another great thing. It was a different era, but still they were still great. And I mean, uh, great showman, great musicianship, love the drummer. Um, okay. So that's it. Technical development unit 12 and the encore item is fog hat live by fog hat. I enjoy both these and I hope you do too. Um, I should be said, you know, I talk about cycling through the exercises. You can, of course, do that just by watching the videos over again. Um, but that might kind of be clunky when you're trying to get a lot of things done in your lesson time. So I invite you to become a Patreon Backstage Pass subscriber. If you go to patreon.com forward slash everything base and you um, uh, click on and or sub become a Backstage Pass subscriber, then that gives you access to every video, uh, every video I post that has like support materials, written materials, whatever. You can actually go to the post with the same title, like this one. The post would be titled "Technical Development Unit 12." Click on it. There'll be a link that you can download the uh, PDF. And in uh, most cases, everything's written in standard notation and tablature. So if you don't read standard notation, don't worry about it. The tablature is there for you. Um, but if you do that, then you can print out all the lesson sheets. So reviewing is as easy as just turning a page. Or if you're practicing and it's not convenient to have a computer or your tablet or your phone uh, streaming the videos, um, I think this is a lot more helpful. Um, plus, I've always been the guy that's always printed stuff out. Like there's an online manual to a piece of music gear. I still print it out. I, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm old. Um, but I encourage you, I'd like to have you do that. That support also allows me to reinvest and get better audio equipment, things that I've already been doing, like getting a new lav mic and all that. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, please, uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. It really helps me in the whole big world of uh, YouTube analytics. And uh, hit the uh, bell icon, and that'll let you know every time I post uh, or upload new videos, which is usually on the weekends. And I haven't missed a weekend uh, since I started this, and I don't plan on it. Um, 
And uh, lastly, share, share, share this with others. If you know a bass player, uh, maybe you found this and you're not even a bass player, but your bass player in your band or someone you know could benefit from these uh, lesson videos. I, it'd, it'd be an honor if you could share it with them so we could grow our community. Uh, and I, one last thing, I'm super excited about our uh, Facebook group. We have a Facebook group that is super involved. It's over 500 members at this time of recording and there's a lot of great discussion back and forth. And if you're just uh, freaked out by everything going on weird in the world and you just want to escape and hang with your uh, bass brothers and sisters, I would love to have you. So just go to Facebook, search Everything Bass with Dale Titus, the entire phrase, and you'll find the group. It's free. Just click on it and you're on. And then announce that you've come. Say, hey, new to the group, uh, and you know, tell us a little about yourself. We'd love to have you. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you at the next video.